the more doors you have, the more potential scares. And we ended up designing this set that was going to be way more expensive than we could afford to build. But we had just such an incredible production team. They, they figured it out. I loved Imaginary. Here's Ooh. the deal. Like, psychological thriller mixed with childhood trauma is like the perfect mix, right? This is this is perfect where we, for everybody. Perfect for everybody. It's the Who wouldn't great, like that. It's a great gateway gateway for horror entry for all, uh, the young people. It's is fantastic. Uh, Jason, talk to me about how the idea for Imaginary came across your desk. And we had two great experiences with Jeff. One on Fantasy Island, and one on Truth or Dare. And we were trying to figure out what our next movie should be. And he said, "Well, what do you really want?" And I said, we, "We've done The Purge, and we've done Halloween, and we would. I'd like to do." something more supernatural and super scary and maybe for, for that, that excuse, maybe a little bit younger. And, um, and Jeff did the rest, right? Yeah. You know, I, I just wanted to make a movie about an imaginary friend. I love the idea of playing with subjectivity in, uh, in cinema. And so I just signed a first look deal with Jason. So I was talking to other writers, trying to find people I could collaborate with. And Greg Erb and Jason Ormland, who are old friends of mine, came in and they pitched me this idea of an evil teddy bear. And I sort of felt, well, that's not enough for a movie. My imaginary friend thing isn't enough for a movie. What if we combine them? And uh, we, we delivered a script for Imaginary to Jason. He said, let's make it. The Never Ever reminds me of like a childhood dream that I had of, of, of just this, this crazy place that uh, is filled with terror. Um, talk to me about uh, making that set and using all the, the practicals. I think the, the thing that really like adds to this movie is everything's done practically. So can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, listen, the never ever was a lot of different things and different versions of this script. You know, <laughs> it, at one point, I think it was probably just gonna be a hallway of like 10 doors, right? And, and a little bit more like say the further in the Insidious films. But as we started uh, pre-production, I had a really talented production designer named Megan Rogers. And I kept talking about MC Escher and wanting this feeling of just like hallways that go on forever. Like, you know, when you're Vegas and you're in those hotels and the hallways just seem to never end. Sure. And it, it's kind of terrifying. And I, I wanted that sort of feeling. I also wanted the, the potential for a monster to come out from any door, right? So the more doors you have, the more potential scares. And we ended up designing this set that was going to be way more expensive than we could afford to build. But we had just such an incredible production team. They, they figured it out. Five Nights at Freddy, I think, is the perfect gateway for a younger audience. And this is a perfect follow-up to that, for, to get that young uh, audience moviegoer in to see, to, to introduce them to the horror genre. Um, is there an update on Five Nights at Freddy at all for the sequel? Are you are you thinking I'm like not paying attention? Like you're just gonna get me to wait? I'm, is this guy think? moving behind you? I'm, I'm I like don't know. freaking out. I don't know. <laughs> or did you imagine it? Did I imagine it? I think you might have. No update. But I certainly, I certainly, I certainly hope to see one like all the other fans. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Look, you guys are amazing. The the film is fantastic. Like I said, perfect blend of psychological horror and, and childhood trauma. I, I loved it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure, guys.